Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Carlo Oger, board certified emergency physician and founder of DrER.TV, YouTube channel with almost 500,000 followers, post anything from procedures to medical education to family stuff to some product reviews and things like that. You are watching ED Exit Video Pro, which is a channel within YouTube specifically designed for the healthcare enthusiast or the healthcare professional. Um, in this video, we talked. Uh, we've done started the whole series of videos that we've been doing on radiologic interpretation, and in this particular video, we're gonna do a really nice one. This is a young patient presented to emergency department through the non-acute area of the emergency department. That means that we thought he had nothing wrong with him, basically, with pain on his lower rib cage. He was jumping on the trampoline with his little daughter the night before when he felt a stitch or a sharp pain in his lower ribs. Uh, he looked well, he was a little bit tender on his lower ribs, and we didn't think much of it. Maybe a, a cracked rib, maybe just a strain of the muscle there. Uh, his lung sounds actually sounded okay, his pulse oximetry was normal, he had no significant past medical history. I obtained a left-sided rib series to make sure it wasn't a cracked rib, or because it's, it's sharp pain in the lungs, maybe a collapsed lung. Well, this is the x-ray, and first we're going to look at the right side. A normal x-ray should look like this. You can see the long process, the little branches of like a little tree, you know, all over the lung, all over the lung. You can see them up here, you can see up here, over here. So those are blood vessels and dilated stuff that makes it look like there's something there, almost like a very fine branches of a tree. On the left side of this patient here, you can see that that does not exist. It's all like dark in between the ribs, all dark. So that's air going straight through without much of a long uh, tissue component to it. Uh, going further, you can see this uh, rounded structure right there. That is actually the lung. The whole lung has been compressed like so from the leak of air, the pneumothorax. Pneumo is air, thorax, air within the thorax. So the air started leaking somewhere in there, a little air vessel broke, started leaking air, and overnight, it almost completely collapsed along. So the important thing to no uh, note here is, does this patient have a tension pneumothorax? And that's gonna be a question you're gonna face in rotations, in clinical practice, tension pneumothorax. And you, the real answer to that is that you cannot say that patient has a tension pneumothorax based on x-ray alone. Yeah, there are some features that are suggestive, suggestive of tension, but the true definition of tension pneumothorax is a physiological, is a vital sign. Is he tachycardic? Is he hypoxic? Is he hypotensive? And if it's not, then it's not a true tension. Although these are the things you might see with a possible uh, tension pneumothorax, you would see deviation of the trachea to the contralateral side. You would see the aortic not being flattened, almost like this. So patient has early uh, indications of possible tension pneumo, but he didn't have the tachycardia, the hypoxia. He was in no distress, so no, he was not. So if he was on tension pneumo, all you would do is take a really thick needle, you kind of clean up here, right here under the clavicle with a little iron, a little alcohol swab, and you basically throw a dart to his chest, right there. You put a dart of a needle and pss, you decompress the lung. That decreases the tension and buys you time to do your formal treatment of the patient. Um, now, there are ways to do it so that there's a valve mechanism and air can make its way back into the lung and other things like that. Maybe we should do that on another video. But then we did put, uh, the patient was in no distress, so we didn't do the dart or the emergent decompression. We did a formal chest tube placement. And the chest tube placement is done by marking the patient's nipple line, so somewhere in here. And then we go to the anterior axillary line, somewhere in here. And we choose the spot, we numb it with lidocaine. Uh, we gave the patient a little bit of morphine, a little bit of Ativan prior to the procedure, and we used a trocar-based technique for chest tube placement. And then you can see right here, there's that little piece of wire coming in. You can even see a little hole there. That's the chest tube placement. We put a 20 French, which is a pretty small, almost the size of a 
regular straw into his chest and you can see that they actually done a few minutes after uh, the procedure is done now you can see all those long markings we were talking about so there's um, complete decompression of the lung now this particular patient he had a lot of discomfort once he started um, decompressing the lung when his lungs was reinflated he started coughing complaining of a lot of pain more so than he had any time during the procedure which was concerning to me i was a little scared that something was going on with the chest so maybe i didn't put it right maybe it was actually placed like too low and it was actually in the lung parenchyma or the lung tissue itself which was not to be a good thing but after evaluating the x-ray it's in good position patient improved after medicating him for pain he did better so guys we learn here that uh, the true definition of attention pneumo uh, the treatment both emergent and when you have a little more time to do so more of a, a stabilizing treatment which is the dart or emergent decompression by doing your little uh, uh, 14 gauge underneath the clavicle mid clavicular line or doing the formal chest tube which is done at the level of the nipple line and the anterior axillary line and then you come in pointing straight up and then you put your chest tube in suture to the skin get the patient admitted so i hope you guys learned something with this video uh, a little refresher because we already done pneumothoraces some of them small some of them bigger but this was quite quite an impressive pneumothorax so a little refresher again if you're liking this video series please do comment please do share please do let me know what you'd like to see next uh, as this keeps me motivated to keep producing this content thank you so much and we'll see you in our next one Bye bye